from my home to yours, all the very, very best, all the very, very best. I want to talk to you about the promise that what matters to you matters to God. Have you got about eight minutes? If not, please, no worries. If you want to post your prayer needs before you slip out, we'd love to pray for you. We're continuing to explore the, the gospel of John and the miracles of God's presence and power and promise. I unpack these uh, messages and miracles in a, in a brand new book. You are never alone. You are never alone. Did you know that you always have hope? You always have help because you always have the presence of our ever-present God. Today I want to share with you a word about how you matter to God and what matters to you matters to God. Here's a story. During one of my many less than sane seasons of life, I competed in half Ironman triathlons. The event consists of a 1.2 mile swim, a 56 mile bike ride, and a 13.1 mile run. Now, why was a 50 year old preacher, that was my age at the time, participating in, in such endeavors? Well, that's what my wife kept asking me. <laughs> well, don't worry. I didn't wear a Speedo. During one of these events, during one of these races, I prayed the oddest prayer of my life. Four of us had traveled to Florida for the race. One of my friends had invited a, a competitor from Indiana to join us. So all told, I knew these four people, well, three people, myself, plus three others. Now, there were at least 200 uh, participants whom I did not know. In fact, that will prove crucial to the story that I'm about to tell you. I finished the swim, if not dead last, at least nearly dead and almost last. I mounted my bike and I began the three-hour trek. About a third of the way into the cycling portion of the event, I reached into the pocket of my shirt, you know, that back pocket, and, and I reached around to grab some goo. Now, goo is a packet of easily eaten essential nutrients. Well, guess who forgot his goo? I was gooless. I was gooless with a good 30 miles to go. Now, one doesn't find any goo-selling convenience stores on the triathlon trail. Like you, I've offered innumerable prayers in my life. I mean, a lot of prayers. I've prayed for the enfeebled as they died. I've prayed for babies as they were born. I've prayed for broken hearts and broken bones and broken homes. But I had never prayed for goo. <laughs> Yet what was I to do? No goo means no go for an old guy like Max. So I prayed. Between puffs and pedal strokes, I said, <laughs> it's even funny, isn't it? I said, Lord, this might be the only time in eternity that you've heard this request. But here's my situation. <laughs> well, did goo fall from heaven? Sort of. Sort of. The, that fellow from Indiana, the friend of my friend, one of the three people I knew out of the entire field just happened to pedal up from behind. Hey, Max. How's it going? He said. I said, well, matter of fact, I've got a problem. And when he heard of my goo-lessness, he reached into the pocket of his biking shirt and he pulled out three packs. And he said, I got plenty. Here, take these. And he handed them to me and off he went. Now, I know very well what you're thinking. Locato, that is a lame example of answered prayer. Here I am, I'm facing big issues, big stuff. 
and you're talking about something as, as trivial, as lightweight as goo in a race, that's, that's precisely my point. In fact, I think that is also John's point as he tells us in the second chapter of John about Jesus' first miracle. During the wedding at Cana, you will recall, Mary came to Christ with a problem. What was the problem? She said, well, they have no more wine. No more wine. Now, had I been the angel on call that day, I would have intervened. I would have placed a wing between Mary and, and, and Jesus. And I would have reminded her about the mission of her son. He was not sent to the earth to handle such mundane day-to-day -day tasks and problems. We're, we're saving his miraculous powers for cadaver calling, for leopard touching, for demon casting. No wine? Don't whine to Jesus, Mary. But luckily, I was not the angel on call. And Mary enlisted the help of her son to deal with the, well, with the problem, empty wine ladles. Now I ask you, of what importance is a wineless wedding? Of what importance is a wineless wedding? Of all the needs of the people on the planet that day, why would bone dry wine vats matter? Simple. It mattered to Jesus because it mattered to Mary. And what matters to you matters to Jesus. You probably think that's true when it comes to the heavyweight issues, to the big stuff, right? When it comes to the, to the major league difficulties like death and, and like disease and like sin and, and like di disaster. You, you know that God cares, but, but what about the smaller things? What about grouchy bosses, or flat tires, or lost dogs? What about broken dishes, late flights, or toothaches, or a crashed hard drive? Do these matter? I mean, God's got a universe to run. He's got the planets to keep balanced, and he, he's, he's got presidents and kings to to watch over. He's got his hands full. He's got wars to worry about and, and famines to fix. Who am I to tell him about my ingrown toenail? But here's my point. If Jesus was willing to use divine power to solve a party beverage shortage, what does that say? How much more would he be willing to intervene on on the way to your matters of life. Listen, my friend, God wants you to know that you can talk to Him. You can take your needs to Him, all your needs, all your needs, big or small, to Him. You're never alone. You're never alone because Jesus cares about everything. He cares about everything you're going through. And He wants to hear about it. He's your friend. And friend, I got some great news. God will hear your prayers. And in the right way, at the right time, He'll meet your needs. He'll, he'll bring you goo during a triathlon. He'll bring wine to your table. He'll bring solutions to your struggles and sight to your eyes and strength for your step. And most of all, most of all, He'll bring you power. You, my friend, are stronger than you think. Because God is nearer than you know. You're never, ever alone. Now, if you'd like to dive deeper with me into the Gospel of John, I, I have an invitation for you. I'd like to invite you to a six-week online Bible study. It's, it's based on the You Are Never Alone book and a companion video Bible study. Now, when you join, if you'd like to join, you get free access to six video teaching sessions with me. You get a collection of prayers and devotions for, for when you feel like a, 
you need some encouragement when you feel alone and you get a community of others who are going through the, the study with you in many ways going through the same stuff. Why don't you sign up? Sign up at maxlocato.com. This may be a season of societal distancing, but our Lord is near. Our Lord is here. And our Lord is here to help. Amen.